Hi guys, this is a shorter screencast on the fact that we've now classified our skills into continuums and this is how coaches identify those particular continuums and choose which uh, methods of practice to use to coach those particular skills. So it's what we call manipulating skills. Alright, so there are four different methods of manipulating skills. So as I say, once you've identified what sort of skill your skill is, if it's a gross skill or a fine skill or a serious skill or a continuous skill, etc., you can then place that skill into a practice that's suitable for that type of skill, which is why coaches and sports scientists and teachers do this. The four main methods of manipulating skills practice or coaching these skills are as follows part practice, whole practice, part progressive practice and whole part whole practice and I'm just going to go through each of those in turn very briefly and we're going to develop these themes throughout your next lesson. So make sure you take good notes on each of these and bring them with you to class. Okay, part practice. This type of practice is perfect for low organisation skills. So those which have Lots of subroutines, but not too complex, and you can easily break the skill down into parts. So for this type of practice, you need to break the skill into each section, and then you practice each section on its own. Once you've practiced each individual section, you then put all the sections back together again, and you practice the skill as a whole. A good example of this is a tennis serve. So when you do a tennis serve or when you watch it on TV in Wimbledon or the Olympics, you can see the different parts. And what you can do with that is you can practice each of the parts on its own. So for example, we take Serena Williams, we could practice the ball throw. Okay, so you can just practice that bit on its own. So that's one part. I can practice that using part practice. I can then practice the striking of the ball. So I can throw the ball up and strike the ball on its own. That's one part. I could then practice just following through after striking. So I could just throw a ball in front of me and follow through after striking. And I can practice each of these individual parts and then put the parts back together again to practice the whole tennis serve. So that's what we call part practice. Don't necessarily have to do them in order, I can practice them on their own, but essentially we do put it all back together again. Okay, opposite to that is what we call whole practice, which as it suggests is practicing the whole movement in one go. And this is best for skills that are highly organized, remember they're hard to spot separate parts, so it looks like a skill could only be done in one go, and highly complex skills. So if you take like a dive routine, uh, for Tom Daly, you might have to practice that in one go because it's so complex that it requires one effort. As just mentioned, the skills are taught as a whole movement in this practice type. So, for example, Lewis Smith on the pummel horse will have to practice this routine in one go. Um, he actually uses a bucket, which I can explain in class of how they do that. But sometimes they use specialist equipment because the skill is quite complex and it's difficult to get a feel for the movement without using some sort of assistance. Very difficult to do some of those skills in whole practice. But whole practice essentially is practicing a skill as one whole movement. Part progressive practice differs from part practice in that it's like a chain. So if you've got a highly complex skill, such as a dive routine, Tom Daly again, or a serial skill, such as a gymnastics routine, where you've got lots of different parts to add together, this is perfect for that. And how this works is you practice one part and then on its own, and then you add a, a next part together to make one and two. Then you add a smaller part on top of that, to make one and two and three and then you keep adding small parts to make longer sections and then that skill is then practiced as a whole at the end so what I mean by that is if we take uh, the triple jump so to start with we might just practice the run up and the jump so as shown here so the first part in part progressive might be practice the run 
practice the run and the jump. So section one is the run on its own. Practice two is run and jump. So I've put two parts together. Once I've done that, I might practice three bits together. So it'd be run and jump and hop. So we've now got three parts all together. That's one long part. Once I've done that, I might try the jump. So it's run and jump and hop and then a final jump so thus creating the triple jump which is effectively hop skip jump which they know the terms as but it's it's almost run jump run jump and then I could try and add on the landing so I've gone from run it's my first section I've added a second section so run and jump third section was the, the hop or the skip Okay, so run and jump and hop or skip. Fourth section, start to jump again, so the last lunge. <coughs> and the fifth section is just sort of mid-flight landing. Okay, so I'm adding all of those sections together a bit at a time to make longer parts. Whole part, whole practice differs to all of them, and this is the most commonly used practice and it's suited to pretty much most skills apart from whole skills which are quite difficult because they're hard to identify the main middle sections essentially what happens here is you teach a skill as a whole movement first so you have a go at it to start with the coach will then spot a mistake when you take part in your skill and he'll isolate that mistake to practice that section on its own once you practice the individual section you're weak at, you then go back to the whole skill and you practice it as a whole again. So for example, we take James LeBron and if we use a layup or a slam dunk, he'll practice the layup or slam dunk on its, slam dunk on its own. The coach might say, okay, there's something wrong with your approach. We'll practice the run up on its own. So the coach might go back and we'll practice the run up on its own, just the run up and then we'll add it back into the slam dunk as a whole again. He'll say, OK, James, let's practice the whole slam dunk again and see if your run-up has got any better. So that's whole part whole, and that can be applied to most skills. As per usual, go over the whole screencast. Make sure you understand it, make good notes. Bring to lesson, as well as any questions, and we'll delve a bit further.